let's go back and I want to show you a favorite tool of mine, the Power Pro. Also discounted for TST members. Okay. Yes, actually Power Pro, a good supporter of ours, gives us a very good discount that's passed on to you guys. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this amp clamp and I can either go around this wire, okay, or the other wire. And if you look, I have power going in, I got jumper wires, the little GM or Thexton leads in there, and when I click the motor, look at the amperage right here. You see how that amperage is going up? Don't worry about the, the red, look at the blue. If I slow the time up, you see that spike when it goes down? If I flip the coil, uh, the amp clamp over, guess where the spike is going to go? That's right, you guessed it, it's going to go up. So this particular motor, that's zero. I'm trying to grab it here. Okay. Let me shut this noise maker off. Now, that particular motor right here, move right into there, Craig. This motor, if I look at my amperage, if this is zero, my amperage went up one amp, 1.9 or so amps, because I'm almost at the two amp box. Every 100 millivolts equals one amp. So that'd be one amp, two amp, that'd be three amps. We're real close to 1.9 amps. You could check every single solenoid on a vehicle. There are many of solenoids, whether it's an EVAP solenoid that typically pulls 3 to 400 milliamps, 3 to 400 milliamps, very small amperage, okay, or injectors that may pull a little more, or an EPC solenoid, electronic pressure control on a transmission that can pull 5 to 7 amps for approximately couple of milliseconds, about three milliseconds. It's like that peak and hold injector. Remember that pulled uh, four to six uh, amps very shortly for less than six milliseconds. And the pulse modulated, that pulled five to seven amps. But it did that for a short period of time, less than six milliseconds. Anything more than 1.2 amps, again, will burn the computer circuit up.